Good afternoon. I'm a healthcare policy advocate in Minnesota. I spend a considerable amount of time working on healthcare policy issues. This is a more general discussion. Uh, the pandemic response has tended to focus, of course, on mitigation strategies. Uh, this presentation is really more focused on the underlying disparities in our healthcare system. There's a lot of material here, uh, so I'll be going through it rather quickly and not as per perhaps not as thoroughly as I like. The extent of COVID-19's impact, economic impact on LGBTQ people, as well as other ways in which LGBTQ people are increased risk of infection and health complications, are mostly unknown. Uh, a couple of reasons from that. That's a statement from the Human Rights Campaign. Uh, first of all, we've noticed that a lot of the survey data isn't done, or data collection isn't done. Uh, an another interesting aspect of it, though, is the growth of the transgender community. The definition of transgender has uh, broadly increased over the past 10 years. Uh, data from the, the UK shows that the number of referrals to transgender services has increased 4,400 uh, percent in the past 10 years. So some of the difficulties in determining the numbers. So this is the CDD factors that contribute to increased risk. I'm not focusing specifically on LGBTQ, uh, but generalized populations in, uh, or marginalized populations in general, which would include, of course, Black communities, Latin, Indigenous populations. Uh, these are some of the factors that are experienced consistently by marginalized populations and considered risk factors by the CDC. Discrimination, healthcare access, occupation, educational income and housing. Uh, some of that's already been reviewed in the previous presentations. This is the Navajo Nation is one area of extreme health disparity that received a lot of national recognition during this pandemic. Uh, this is a documentary on Navajo Nation. Uh, Bernie Sanders, of course, a uh, popular advocate for the health care for all system. Uh, this is a, a brief look at some of the uh, healthcare history that led to where we are today. Uh, in the 1960s, we had the uh, kind of the explosive growth of employment based healthcare system. We're really the only country in the world that has that system. It's inherently discriminatory, and the desire to maintain uh, employment based healthcare systems is essentially discriminatory and racist. The 1973 Health Maintenance Organization Act was probably the beginning of our healthcare crisis today. Uh, it established our for profit model of healthcare. Prior to 1973 in the HMO Act, it was illegal to profit off of healthcare. Obamacare was uh, intended to be a major step forward in healthcare reform. Uh, unfortunately, it hasn't really delivered. The high profits really continue to remain an important part of the healthcare system. Obamacare didn't really reduce the cost of healthcare. It simply increased the number of insurance and the amount of money delivered into the healthcare system. Cost remains the most significant factor. Some of the biggest flaws of the ACA limited lists of doctors and hospitals. You have the defined networks, large gaps in covered benefits, financial barriers to care, needless complexity, and millions remain uninsured. Many of those that are insured are, ins are insured in very high uh, deductible plans. People that can't afford the insurance initially can't afford the deductibles. Some of the costs associated with it, a uh, percentage of bankruptcies in the U.S. due to medical debt is 66%. 75% of those people actually had health insurance. Uh, this bottom figure is probably the most significant. The percentage of healthcare dollars spent on administration. A third of our healthcare dollars aren't going towards healthcare. Drug companies, medical care companies, insurance companies, HMOs spend a lot of money on marketing, developing marketing plans to convince the public that. They represent the appropriate healthcare system. Big Pharma spent $19 on marketing for every dollar spent on research and development. This is the kind of salaries made by CEOs of these companies. A lot of these companies are representing nonprofit organizations. And an obvious example of the administrative costs that drives our healthcare system. 
Uh, I think this slide pretty much speaks for itself. I wish I had some slightly more recent data here, but uh, this little green line at the bottom, of course, is the number of percentage of increase in doctors from 1970 to 2000. The blue area is the uh, number of administrators employed in our healthcare system. So this is some other signs of a growing healthcare crisis. Uh, I would draw particular attention to the first two items here. Total number of hospitals declined by 15% from 1975 to 2020. And the number of available hospital beds declined 37% from 1975 to 2020. Uh, I mean, this is part of our current crisis in the um, pandemic is the overflow of our hospitals and the lack of resources to care for the people. But one thing I would really like to emphasize in this is the fact that these numbers really indicate that healthcare costs ought to be going down. Uh, technology ought to be reducing the cost of healthcare. We have fewer hospitals, we have shorter hospital stays, we have a lot of outpatient, uh, a lot of procedures are done on outpatient now. And unfortunately, a lot of those outpatient procedures aren't covered by insurance. This is just a slide that illustrates the skyrocketing cost of uh, health care since 1999. And also, you know, relative to the worker earnings and overall inflation rate, it's uh, substantial. Uh, again, some general consequences of the ACA. You know, one of the interesting consequences of the ACA was the uh, extreme increase in premium rates for the single uh, self-employed market, uh, the individual market. Uh, their rates oftentimes went up 20, 30% a year for several years, and more money was put into the healthcare system through reinsurance programs to help mitigate uh, the rising premium costs. Uh, health insurance industries, it's, uh, this is how they explain the, the rising costs. They blame it on uh, lifestyle, old people, excessive use of health care, people are irresponsible, uh, new technology is expensive. You know, with respect to uh, new technology, a profit driven healthcare system drives towards higher margin services. And so we have this very high level of very expensive services, and we don't have the adequate low level healthcare family type doctor, rural healthcare systems that we really need. Uh, truth is we're not a very old population relative to other countries that have universal healthcare, uh, not big smokers, um, less true in the marginalized communities, the LGBT communities we heard earlier in the presentation, uh, but still not a significant impact in the overall cost of our of America's healthcare system. We don't use a lot of healthcare. We're at the bottom of the list in terms of physician visits per capita. Uh, and yet, the United States on average spends almost twice as much as other uh, industrialized nations. Uh, we, and we have worse outcomes. We have uh, a lower uh, health uh, life expectancy. We have higher maternal mortality rate, excuse me. Uh, we have a higher infant mortality rate. Uh, one caveat of this slide is that uh, the US does count more premature deaths uh, in this figure, but it isn't, doesn't account for the significant difference with respect to other nations. This is the primary solution that's being offered a universal health care that would reduce administrative costs. We need to reduce the cost of health care and improve access, in particular for marginalized communities and the LGBTQ community. This is an example. Some states have taken uh, initiatives on their own. Montana developed a model for their state employees. Uh, Oklahoma and Connecticut removed private insurance from state Medicare programs, saving the $2.25 billion, I think that's over a 10 year period. It's not quite as dramatic as I'd like, but still substantial. The public option uh, is what's being offered to us now. Instead of a single payer system, the public option is, is basically another insurance program going to have roughly the same impact that the ACA did. It's not going to reduce costs. 
just an indication that you know, a lot of people are familiar with the idea that Bernie Sanders has supported Medicare for all. He's not the only one. This is another bill introduced by Representative Pramila Jopal. Uh, this is the one that healthcare policy advocates in Minnesota actually supports. Universal health care has widespread appeal among the public, among different uh, groups. Uh, progressives, conservatives, the independents, there's something for everyone. Uh, what's lacking really is the political will to do it. Summary, you know, current policy has evolved around protecting the profits of the healthcare industry. That same policy perspective is clearly evident in the pandemic response. It's evident in the vast disparity in health outcomes and economic consequences for marginalized communities. There has been little or no discussion about the atrophy of our healthcare facilities, the neglect of our national reserves, or the exploitation of the essential worker class. I recall saying myself back in February of 2020 that once this virus touches the working class, it will spread like wildfire because they are already health compromised, they don't have ad adequate health insurance, and they are expected to come to work even if they are sick. They don't have sick days. So these are a lot of the policy issues that we need to address in our healthcare system. If we expect to do better in the next pandemic, we need to restore the resiliency of our healthcare system and increase the general health of our population. I, for one, don't wish to see the United States remain at the bottom of the list for global health outcomes. And finally, who cares if you get sick? Nurses. So I just want to give a shout out to the uh, nurses that have done so much and sacrificed so much during this pandemic. Some of the material in this uh, presentation was provided by the Minnesota Nurses Association. Our thanks to them for all they do. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you.